Last week, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration issued a safety recall for the Lectron Vortex plug. That's the adapter that allows authorized non-Tesla vehicles to charge on Tesla superchargers. And if you follow this channel, you may have seen a review I did on it about a month ago. Well, things have changed a bit. So in today's video here, I'm going to explain exactly what this recall is all about, what affected owners should do, and how Lectron is remedying the situation. Okay, so the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration issued a safety recall for the Lectron Vortex adapter. So before we go any further, let's take a look at that safety recall notice and see exactly what it says. Okay, so you can see here on top, it says part 573 safety recall report. And the manufacturer name is Drop Cases Limited. The submission date was April 25th. And you could see down here, it has an address in Hong Kong, Drop Cases Limited. I assume that's the parent company for Lectron because I know Lectron is based in Hong Kong, but I'm not 100% sure. They can see here the number of potentially involved adapters. These things just got released a month or so ago. So there's not a lot of them out there, at least thankfully. And now if you take a look down at the equipment, information. The brand is Lectron, uh, the Vortex plug, Tesla supercharger, the CCS adapter, as I talked about in my review, 500 amps, 1000 volts. Now come down here, descriptive information. The adapter enables charging at Tesla supercharger stations for non-Tesla CCS1 electric vehicles. The issue affects the NAX latching mechanism on certain adapters. And these are production dates March 14th through April 8th. And those dates are important, and I'll explain why later. Okay, so down here, description of defects. Some units feature a latch pin that deviates from the intended design, impacting secure locking of the charger coupler. So it sounds like the contract manufacturer may not have made that locking pin exactly the way they were supposed to, or at least some of them aren't. Okay, now description of safety risk. If the adapter does not latch securely, the charger coupler can potentially be forcibly removed by the user without depressing the NAX latch. If the adapter does not securely latch and the user attempts to disconnect it from the charger without releasing the NAX latch and cutting the power from the charging station, there is a heightened risk of an electrical event which could increase the risk of injury. And description of cause, a limited number of non-conforming units were shipped to customers due to an error in the supplier's process. So it does really sound like the supplier made that locking mechanism incorrectly and it wasn't to the original design. Okay, we go a little bit lower. The component name, Vortex Plug, Tesla Supercharger, CCS Adapter, all basic stuff here. Component manufacturer, this I assume is the contract manufacturer, Shenzhen Top Brand. And, that, and this company, Shenzhen Top Brand, they make a lot of charging equipment. I've seen that name for a number of different components in electric vehicle chargers. Take a look at the chronology. On or about April 17, 2024, Drop Cases Limited became aware of a user re reporting in an April 15th YouTube video that they were unable to latch their unit to a Tesla supercharger. That's a little different. Drop Case Limited immediately contacted the user requesting the return of the adapter for evaluation. Concurrently, Drop Case Limited initiated an internal investigation and a root cause analysis. By on or about the end of April 18, 2024, it was determined that an error in the supplier's process resulted in a limited number of non-conforming units being shipped to customers, specifically within the first 1,121 units dispatched. Out of an abundance of caution, Dropcase Limited chose to make the report. Okay, so down here, description of remedy. At no cost to the customer, Dropcase Limited will replace all units that are subject of this report. Customers who paid for a pre-notification remedy will be eligible for reimbursement 
in accordance with Dropcase Limited's forthcoming reimbursement plan. That kind of sounds like if you bought another adapter, like the A to Z adapter, they'll even refund you for that. I, I'm not, I don't have 100% clarity on that, but it sounds like your remedy might be, listen, this one's not safe. I'm going to buy another one. So keep an eye out for that. You might actually be able to get reimbursed if you bought another adapter. The remedy component is a production adapter featuring a Nax latch pin with a straight edge to prevent the removal of the charging coupler unless the Natch latch is depressed. I'm going to show you what that means later on because I suspect the latch inside the adapter is a little rounded on the edge and that's allowing it to slip off when you pull it. The recall condition was corrected in production by implementing the correct Nax latch design. So there it does seem to indicate Lectron had a different design than what the contract manufacturer was making, both in the current and ongoing manufacturing through updating units built with the incorrect latch design. Okay, and finally, recall schedule. Dropcase Limited will promptly provide notice to its customers and can begin offering the recall remedy effective immediately. Planned dealer notification note, May 3rd to May 3rd. Planned owner notification date, May 3rd to May 3rd. So uh, you should already have been notified if you are a current owner of one of these adapters. So you should know that there's a problem. If you don't, check your spam. Maybe you got an email on that, but you definitely want to know what's going on with this so you can get a new adapter or just get refunded if you lost confidence in Electron at this point. State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, Follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at Qmerit install it. All right, so let's take a little look at exactly what the issue is. First of all, these are the three adapters that are available today. Well, actually, there's, there's a couple more that are very low quality. I don't even want to talk about them. Um, so these are the three that I focus on. This is the actual official Tesla adapter here. This is the A to Z adapter, and this is the Electron adapter, the one that is currently having this issue. So first off, let's take a look at the Tesla adapter. Now this is a simulation of a CCS1 port. This side gets plugged into it, and it locks to the port automatically by this locking mechanism on the top. And as you can see on all the adapters, this locking mechanism has a very sharp edge, and it's oh, it's th this is never going to be a problem as far as I'm concerned, unless it's broken. Additionally, because when it gets latched to the vehicle, most vehicles then have a locking pin that pushes down on it, so you can't even uh, press this button and release it um, while the vehicle is charging. It holds it in as a as an added layer of safety, particularly when you lock your vehicle. It locks it. It locks the connector to the vehicle so nobody can unplug you when you walk away. Okay, so that's the, the, the CCS one end. As you can see, all these will lock in nicely. Here's the Electron. Same thing. It's not, it's not going to be able to be released unless you depress this tab and pull it out. Now we're going to look at the other end. So the other end, here's a, a Nax or Tesla uh, connector. It slides in and it won't come out. It can't come out. Um, and it can't for safety reasons. You don't want either end to be able to pull away without you depressing one of the tabs because when you depress either this tab or the unlocking tab for the NAC side, as soon as you depress that tab, power gets shut off. The charging event stops. Because if you were able to pull the connector away from the vehicle, either end, while it was charging, you're gonna have a pretty violent event happening on the pins in the pin area because power is gonna be flowing through this. It's a lot of power. So that's why we have these locking mechanisms on both ends of the adapters. So that's a Tesla adapter. The A to Z adapter, same thing. This goes in, we lock it. <clears throat> it's not going anywhere. So I have to unlock it comes off. Now, 
if you watch this channel, you know I reviewed this Electron adapter. I want to tell you a little bit about the history of how this uh, problem has happened. I was the very first person, I think, in the world outside of Electron and the manufacturing partners to get this adapter. I interviewed Electron CEO Chris Maywald back in February, and he sent me one of these. He overnighted it to me so I could have it in my hand when I interviewed him. However, the funny thing is it arrived at my house like an hour after our planned interview, so it wasn't in the video, but I had one at that point, and this was very early, this is in February, I got this, I think like February 7th or 8th. So I got this way before the uh, window of manufacturing of the defect happened. So I gave this a full review and it worked fine. I, I, I test both ends for being able to pull uh, the adapter out hot. Nothing, there was no problem. It wasn't till about a week or two after my uh, review that Brendan Flash, who he's the one that originally noticed this problem. I know a lot of people online posted pictures and videos about it, but Brendan gets, should get credit for it because he's the first person to actually notice that it can be pulled out hot. I don't think that the uh, safety recall notice was referring to Brendan's. I think they found somebody else who noticed it after Brandon. But anyway, he's the first person to notice and he should get credit for it. So this is the adapter that they sent me back in February, which was outside of the defect window because I think they weren't even producing these at this time. I think they were just maybe building them by hand. They only had a few of them out there. So when I got this adapter and I tested it with my uh, pull test, <coughs> looked fine to me. But now that I knew there was an issue with it, I inspected it closely and I noticed the edge of the pin isn't quite as sharp as it should be. It is rounded a little bit. So, me being me, I really pull on this thing and I can break it free. Although, I think if they were all made to this specification, I don't think this would have been a problem. I don't think people would have noticed it because you shouldn't have to pull it as hard as I do to get it, break it free. So. <clears throat> See that? You shouldn't be able to do that, but still, that's borderlining on abuse to have to pull it that hard to break it free. However, I asked Lectron to send me another adapter because I wanted to have one in both of my vehicles that are Tesla Supercharger authorized. I have a Ford F-150 Lightning and a Rivian R1S. They both can use the Tesla Supercharger network. So I asked them to send me another one, which they did. Here's the thing. I never even opened the box. I had been using this one and just taking it between the uh, vehicles. So here's the second one they, they sent me. They sent me this one the end of March, or yeah, right around the end of March. This one is within that window of defect. Now let's take a look. A little different. So this is a problem. The first one that I have, honestly, while it should hold no matter how hard you pull, there's almost no instance where anybody would have to apply the amount of pressure that, you, that I did to be able to release that. And the funny thing is when Brandon posted that he had this issue, I quickly ran out, did mine pull, and I'm like, and I messaged him, I was like, dude, I'm not seeing this with my adapter. Maybe you've got a bad adapter. And at that time, we didn't know if he just got a bad adapter or if they were, but now we found out. Now, a whole huge batch of them came out and this is included in that batch. So, it's a serious problem. You cannot have adapters or connectors allowed to disconnect from electric vehicle while power is flowing through them. And if you own one of these, please don't use it. Uh, it already seems like Electron's on top of this. They're making uh, the replacement models. They're gonna ship them out to you. I know you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, um, but um, uh, I wouldn't use this. If you absolutely have to, if you're on a road trip and you absolutely have to, just you know, make sure that nobody is uh, walking by it or gonna trip over the supercharger cable and pull it loose. Now I know some vehicles like the Lightning, barely can reach the supercharger and the cable is taut. That could be a problem with this.
because that might be enough to, to pull it loose. So uh, my advice is don't use it. But if you absolutely have to, stand by the thing and make sure it's nice and, and, and tightly connected and make sure nobody messes with the cable to, to, to pull it loose because you could see how easy this one uh, disconnects. If, you ha if it was like this, I would say, don't worry about it. Um, I would still say, get the new one and send this one back because it shouldn't come loose no matter how hard you pull. But um, this is, th that's a huge, huge problem. So, okay, th that's where we're at now. So um, what's going to be the process of the replacements? I don't know. I don't know how quickly they're going to be shipping them out to you. But I do know this. I have an interview scheduled this week, again, with the CEO of Electron, Chris Maywald, to talk about this. He's agreed to come on State of Charge and discuss this whole issue and, uh, you know, what went wrong, how they're going to remedy it, how they're going to instill faith in their customers again, because I can imagine people that, that bought this probably right now don't have any trust in Electron, you know, and um, I can understand that. Now, I've been dealing with Electron for years. I have so many Electron adapters, their chargers, they make pretty good equipment. And that's why I chose to select this to be one of the ones that I review here and potentially endorse use of. Now, you know, my, my confidence is a little shaken. So I need to talk to Chris about this. Uh, and uh, did they rush to bring it to market? Was it just not ready? How is there no quality control? How did that get shipped from the factory to customers? without people testing this? These are questions I have to ask Chris because, you know, safety is really important with electric vehicle charging. And I, I focus on it a lot here on State of Charge. And for me to tell people, look, um, you know, I don't have a problem using this with my electric vehicles, which I did. And then three weeks later, have this huge problem, you know, I'm kind of second guessing now my faith in the company. And, uh, you know, People can make mistakes. Contractors can make defective parts. It happens all the time. How the companies deal with it is going to really make the difference in me losing faith in Electron or saying, okay, you had a bad um, event there. You made good on it. And now we have to keep an eye on you in the future. But this is why the, the Tesla and the other companies are saying only use the approved adapter. This is why. Now, could a defect happen in this? Of course it could. Um, did, you know, there aren't people, uh, you know, there's not a room set up in Fremont where people are making all these components themselves and assembling them. Uh, th that's just not how it's done. I'm certain they're getting parts made in different uh, places. They might even be assembled uh, by uh, other people. I don't think Tesla's making these themselves. So, you know, but you would think that Tesla has a better quality control going on at least when they had a lot of people in the charging division, but that's that's another story uh, for another day. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to monitor this. Um, I'm also going to be talking with the CEO of A to Z again soon because he has some uh, new information with regards to... Um, UL testing and certification that should be coming up soon. Um, and that's going to be a big part of getting confidence in these adapters, these not, so let's say, non-official adapters. Once the UL2252 certification process is ready uh, and people can submit these adapters and get them UL certified, because I, I have to believe most people are going to be comfortable and confident in a product if it is UL certified. Uh, I, I would tell you to be confident if, if the Electron adapter or this adapter here gets UL certified. Now, of course, once it's UL certified, there can be production issues. Things like this can still happen. They happen all the time. That's why there's safety recalls with cars and all type of consumer electronics and all type of products, honestly. Um, but, you know, it's up to the company to, to stay on top of it and make sure everything's being made to spec. Uh, I don't know how these got shipped out without quality control testing that. But that's one of the questions I'm going to ask Chris. So listen, um, that's it for now. I'm going to have a follow-up video really soon with the CEO. We're going to discuss this whole issue, and uh, I'm going to give him the opportunity to uh, you know, regain the confidence that I've had and also that uh, you guys have had in Electron products. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.